you know, we just have to do something different because we're not doing very well uh, currently. And uh, so I would ask Mike that when we, the sheriff and, and the city, we'll get the city and we'll set up a, uh, a meeting and certainly a task force because we really do have to attack this, I think, with some aggressiveness because it's just not getting any better. Yeah. Points well taken. I, I have talked to the sheriff already this morning. Larry, are you willing to... Uh... I'll give that a hand. Okay. And from the county side, Larry will be from the Board of Supervisors to sit on that and 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 work with uh, other county staff here to forge uh, some type of group. Uh, I see Farm Bureau moving and probably more than just exercise. Uh, no, I'd probably walk away. Uh, and she's going to weigh in on the subject. Come on up. Uh, and it certainly include uh, private sector as well. So. Uh, Lindsay Gale, Carroll County Farm Bureau. Um, thank you, Mike, for bringing that to attention. The Farm Bureau has um, come up with a program called Rewarding is, no, Reporting is Rewarding, excuse me. Um, we've kind of resurrected the old Crime Stopper program that was very successful years ago with the Burn Bill Go to Jail program. Um, we've been working with the Sheriff's Department and also local fertilizer companies who have um, had just a, a very big problem in their area as well. Um, our growers have been hit nonstop with sprinklers, equipment, metal, it's just a, a rampant problem, so we would request that we to be involved in this task force. Um, it's a very good problem um, for the agricultural community, for the IED, electrical, and water. Um, our growers are experiencing a huge problem with the, the, the case being lifted as well, so they suffer there as well. Um, just to report, um, Imperial Irrigation District has numerous uh, San Heros out throughout this entire county. Uh, I, I, my son works as a San Hero, and some of his duties are uh, to report any suspicious activity. And as they are out about the night, it's, it's comforting to know that uh, these groups of employees are out there vigilant. Uh, we get sometimes chastised for, you know, what are you doing? Uh, you know, we can't have a deputy on every power pole. We can't have a deputy on every corner of this county. We have a large, large county. So there's a lot of agencies that are addressing this, and and there are times when uh, these San Heralds even called out to patrol ditches that are just simply out to maintain the uh, structures there. And uh, that's the time in which they remove these gates. There's not water flowing. Uh, they remove them, but they're out ever vigilant and reporting any suspicious activity. And so I think uh, it's just all part of the community groups working together that's going to address this uh, here locally. Well, and I think with the, um, Gary, correct me if I'm wrong, I think with the, the illegal dumping task force, there's some talk about getting them, um, the San Heroes involved in that as well. Correct. Um, as far as deputizing them to. That's, to another, that's another group under consideration. Yeah. So I think, I think all these agencies need to join together and support. Maybe we can call this the, instead of crime stoppers the copper stoppers. <laughs> and, and, um, so the point well taken, Mr. Grogan, and, and that leads to, to this final slide of support, what uh, we're enlisting of the county, but also I think uh, enhancing, um, building on what uh, Mr. Grogan mentioned. Um, we have some copies of some posters. You know, just a, a little blurb sometimes, when you walk into an office and, and you see a little poster, it kind of puts the, the reminder in your mind and, and fortunately, unfortunately, it probably uh, will educate someone that walks in or doesn't really read the paper or you know, listen to the radio or see the billboard that, that we're going to be putting up. Um, but uh, from the county perspective, if you might consider um, placing some of these posters, uh, educating or informing your employees of what the IID is offering, uh, enlisting all of our employees in both organizations to, to uh, keep an eye out. Uh, I, I'm not aware of how many employees that the county has, but you know, if you have them both, you know, over 3,000 employees, and, and we can enlist the, the support of the public. Everybody keep an eye out, and you know, it's, there's no harm in reporting something suspicious. If it's nothing, then it passes. But if it is something, then uh, perhaps we can prevent a crime. Well, and I think, Mike, in that regard, um, 
just as uh, was pointed out about using, uh, potentially uh, looking at using San Heros as, as, as a, to help with the illegal dumping issue, which we both share a great deal of issue with and a lot of expense as well, uh, that we uh, educate our folks, uh, especially those that are out and about regularly uh, in, in various areas, building inspectors and, and, and environmental uh, folks uh, and on and on. Uh, um, in both works, we have people that are out and about and so forth. So all of these people educate them so that they know uh, what to look for and when they do see something, what to do with the information, uh, who to call and, and what to do with it. So. I think it would be good of us as well to add to that list is that we educate our own employees to be uh, good uh, eyes and ears on this particular subject, just as we're going to do with the illegal dumping issue. Very good. So uh, as uh, mentioned, uh, these items of, of interest perhaps that the county could, uh, could take. That's the extent of the presentation and appreciate the, the offer to uh, Great. Uh, I, I, and I appreciate the suggestions, and I would go further and, and, and on behalf of this board uh, um, direct our staff to go ahead and initiate uh, any or all of these uh, suggestions on the county side. Uh, produce a piece of literature that we can put in with the paychecks so that everybody is aware of what's going on and, and to work together uh, and so forth. So, Mr. Chair, I think this would also be, be discussed on it. This is not the time of year for ground wire to be missing, and certainly uh, uh, the fact that uh, we could have a major system shut down because of something like this, uh, I think represents a, a real health hazard and certainly uh, the possibility of life endangerment. So it's not something that just is it's just some copper. This could represent uh, certainly a substantial uh, threat to uh, the elderly and uh, um, yeah. Considering some of our days here, and the hot as it is, and that you're going to be without any electricity for uh, a day or two days or three days or five days or whatever it's going to be, uh, could be a serious problem. I mean, you're talking spoilage of food uh, in your freezers and refrigerators, uh, and and you'd have to you wouldn't be able to occupy your home, uh, and now your home is left uh, vacant and available to anyone to break into. So, you've got all kinds of issues that weigh in on this thing. So. Well, we have over 130 days of triple digit weather, but we have anywhere from 40 to 60 percent of those days where the temperature is over 110, uh, particularly in May and June. That, uh, a recent statistic came out last night in the news that uh, here in Imperial County we had 14 days exceeding the temperature of 110. Yeah. And uh, we, we have had an impact here in the central Association. And, and just to give you a, a different perspective, in uh, Richella, our branch up there, almost every day, almost every day, are uh, we having to make a Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. This time we're going to take a break to 10.15, which time we will then have uh, presentations. unchecked amount of gasoline at county's expense. 